Hi, I'm Christelle Tomlinson, self-management strategist and founder of the Success Farm Life Academy, where we coach individuals and teams in the art of self-management. How to manage your emotions, how to manage your energy, how to manage your money, how to manage your time. And this video is dedicated to just that, strategies for time management, especially in a high-stress uh, work and global context. You may be feeling overwhelmed when you think about the things you have to do, how little time there is to do it, how restricted and limited those resources may be, and just the urgency of now. Everything seems to be needed and necessary right now. And that can cause a sense of panic, of overwhelm that leads into other physiological changes and diseases and disorders if we're not managing our stress well. In fact, before the COVID-19 pandemic, the World Health Organization had named stress the global epidemic for the 21st century. We are stressed out and the shifts in our health realities has made that situation extremely worse. Incomes are in jeopardy, relationships are under pressure, and this sense of uncertainty about what is next amplifies all the stressors that existed before. And being online can make that even more intense, looking at how other people's lives seem to be going on uh, unabated and undisturbed by the pandemic, while yours might feel a little stuck, heavy, hard. So we want to help you manage the sense of stress by really managing yourself and the things you have to do. So I'm going to share with you a simple strategy that I have used uh, for, for years now a five-step system to organize your list of things to do so when you enter each day when you're looking at your week ahead when you're thinking about your life goals you don't feel so overwhelmed and anxious because the list never ends um it's a strategy through um decades of research around time management that has gotten quite popular and it's the a b c d e strategy not a new one but it's absolutely my favorite and that's why i thought it best to share it with you inside our community so grab a piece of paper and a pen take some notes so that you can apply this to your to-do list right now it's one of those use right now strategies you don't have to wait you don't have to delay application is asap so here we go. How do you organize your list of things to do to pick the right priorities and to work in a very focused way until the task is completed at a high quality? A, B, C, D, E. If you have a list of things to do right now, as I said, application is ASAP, you can begin using the strategy as I'm going through it. Or you could pause and create a list of things to do and then we're going to work with that list uh, with real life examples related to your, your to-do list. So. A tasks, we're dividing your tasks into A, B, C, D, E tasks. What are A tasks? A tasks are the ones you're going to be doing first. That kind of work is what I call essential action. You take those actions so you can get to the essential outcomes or the goals you're trying to achieve. It's not the busy work, it's not the frivolous work, it's not the thing that you're doing because you, you were scared to say no, the thing that you're doing because you just enjoy, the things, thing that you're doing because you've always done it. Mm -mm. It's a core task that's going to help you move forward exponentially on the goals that are important to you. So how do you know if you have an A task on your list? An A task is urgent. The time that you do it is critical because it is time sensitive. If you miss the deadline, you're putting yourself at risk of failing altogether on a goal. So it's urgent, something that has to be done immediately or very, 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 very soon. Now, not only is an A task urgent, it is also important. So it is important to achieving a particular goal. So it's not just urgent, no, like having to turn on the TV and watch a football game because the football game is happening, no. It's important to the overall outcomes that you're trying to accomplish for the day, for the week, for the month, for the year. An A task is also um, coming to you with clear negative consequences. So if you do not do it, something is at risk. You feel some kind of pain, there is some harm, there is some loss. You have to have a clear negative consequence for this to be an A task. So look at your list of things to do now and see what task is there or set of tasks that are urgent, time sensitive, important, critical to getting to the outcome that you want to arrive at um, in your work this week or this year. 
and it has a clear negative consequence. If you don't do it, there is some repercussion, some blowback from your boss, from your team, um, or for anybody else who is depending on you to accomplish this task. So you know the risk and the harm of failing to do this work. That's your A task. Go down your list and write A beside all of them. And those are the tasks you do first every single day. If you've ever read Brian Tracy's book, Eat That Frog, then you know the importance of eating those A tasks because they're considered your big frogs, yeah? And in fact, if you have struggles with time management, I would actually recommend that you read Brian Tracy's book, um, Eat That Frog. It's actually recommended reading on the Harvest Hub as part of our um, Success Farmers Harvest Hub book club. Um, we encourage persons to read that at the top of every year because we know how important it is to manage time and manage tasks so you can feel settled, focused, and in flow. So those are your eight tasks. Write on your list right now. A, 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 if you can identify a task that is urgent, important, and has a clear negative consequence. Your next set of tasks are your B tasks. So it is important. It has a clear negative consequence, but it is not urgent in terms of time sensitivity. You can delay doing that until you've finished your A tasks. So again, look at your list and see what is the B task here. I've been telling myself I have to do this now, but I actually don't have to do this now. I can deprioritize to doing it after I have completed my A tasks. It's important. It has a clear negative consequence, but it is not urgent or as urgent as your A tasks. So you can complete your A task and then you can move to B tasks on your list. Now your next set of tasks on your list are your C tasks. Now a C task is one that it's not urgent, it's not important, there's probably no negative consequence for doing it or not doing it. You simply enjoy doing it. And part of your productivity requires that you do work that you enjoy. In fact, the Pomodoro Technique advises us when we're doing work and we're focusing on work to focus exclusively for about 40 minutes and then get up and do an unrelated task. And it could be a task you enjoy. But it's not something you want to do before your A and B tasks. Don't prioritize a C task. Tell yourself it's urgent. You have to do it right now when it's really something you enjoy doing, but it's not important, not urgent, doesn't have a clear negative consequence. So you don't have to take it off your list, but don't do it before your big, important frog tasks. So put C beside it if it is a C task, not urgent, not important, no clear negative consequence, but you enjoy doing it. Now a D task is one that we want to delegate because it is not urgent it is not important it carries no clear negative consequence if you specifically don't do it and it's not even something you enjoy so therefore it's something someone else can take on their plate for which they have a clear negative consequence if it does not get done for which it is urgent and important in their line of work or the set of tasks they have to accomplish maybe they enjoy it maybe they don't but the idea here is to focus on the things that you have to do. You must do them. And those are A tasks and A tasks only. A and B. Every other task is optional. So look at your list and see what D task is there that I need to delegate because it is not urgent. It's not important for me to do. And it has no clear negative consequence for me and I don't even enjoy doing it. You probably said yes under pressure. You probably did not even realize that this was a task assigned to you. And so you need to go and renegotiate this assignment. And a good way to do that, and we'll do a video in the future to help guide you on how to renegotiate your task assignments at work. But you may need to go back to the person who assigned that particular task and show them what your A and Bs look like and the kind of priorities you have laid out and suggest who could take on this D task or leave it to them to reassign it but you have to make clear especially if it's a boss or um, supervisor who had assigned you the task make clear what your priorities are the A's and B's um, and we've done a video already where we advised you on how to talk to your boss around priorities at work so after they help you to set the priorities you can come back with a D task and say well boss remember we agreed that A and B are critical for me to do in order to enhance my job function and improve productivity and output so we can achieve this goal in this quarter this D task is actually pulling me away from an A and B task do you want me to deprioritize an A or B task to do this D task let them tell you yes in most cases, your supervisor will say, no, 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 I have somebody else who can do it. You go and focus on the A and B because I need you to do the A and B. 
communication, strategic communication, which comes from knowing what is your work, what you must do in order to be productive in your workspace. So those are your D tasks. Your E tasks now are not for delegation. Maybe you could delegate them, but the idea here is to eliminate it altogether as non-essential activity, something you don't even want to pass on to anybody else because it's just not important to do. You will find sometimes that by doing your A and B work, the E's disappear. Because they're non-essential, taking care of an essential task actually eliminates an E-task from your list. But if you do have tasks there still that don't fall in A, B, C, or D, look at them and ask yourself, is this something I need to just eliminate? Because there's nobody who I could pass this off to. Because it's not a task I enjoy. It has no clear negative consequence if I don't do it. It's not important to the goals I'm trying to achieve. And it's certainly not urgent. So I'm going to eliminate. Now, applying that ABCDE strategy to your task management, to your to-do list, whether it is your to-do list in the home, to-do list in your relationships, to-do list in your workspace, it helps you to increase your efficiency and your focus. You go in every day knowing what task is important to work on immediately and why you are deprioritizing a task and not working on it now. So you don't carry that guilt around not doing this thing. You don't worry about a B task while you're doing an A task because you know why you're not doing the B task. And if somebody comes to hold you accountable for your work, checking in on particular deadlines for B tasks, you can remind them or make clear because probably they don't know that there are some A tasks that you're working on because they are urgent, because they are important to the goal and the outcome, and because this is the clear negative consequence if I don't get this done by this urgent time. So you're now able to communicate in less anxious, uh, less angry ways to your team leaders, your team members, around why B task isn't done. You can tell them that with the right kind of language, the productivity language that they understand. I hope this video has been helpful for you. If it has, drop a comment below and remember to share this with anybody in your workspace who you know could benefit from this kind of strategic task management approach. Remember, if you're not managing yourself well, it's highly unlikely that you can manage anything or anybody well. So let's focus this year on improving our self-management skills and share this with anybody you know would benefit from this particular tip. It's been a pleasure sharing with you. Drop a comment below, like the video, subscribe to our page if you haven't already. And again, let me know in the comments if there's any topic you'd want me to cover in future videos. We read our comments and we take note of some of the things you recommend for future videos. So please be liberal and share with us what productivity strategies would be useful for you and we'll be sure to do a video on it in future. Thank you so much and take care until we connect again. Keep planting good seeds, keep watering those good seeds, good habits, good deeds, because as certain as the sun rises in the east, you reap what you sow. And if you sow purposefully, your harvest will be bountiful. So keep doing the good work, the right work at the right time. Love and bless. If you need more support, more resources, or would like to book me to come in and train your team, feel free to send me an email at thesuccessfarmja at gmail.com. I'm looking forward to serving you for all your seasons.